everybody. Welcome to the show. The government is planning seven reforms to the way Canadians vote. A new bill reverses a lot of the elements of the Conservatives' Fair Elections Act. Bill C-33, as it's known, will reintroduce vouching and voter information cards for identification, allow the chief electoral officer to undertake public education campaigns, and restore the right to vote to expats who've lived outside of Canada for more than five years, but the government has yet to act on a key promise to end the first-past-the-post voting system. So is the government still committed to changing the electoral system? And with today's tweaks, has it thrown out protections the Conservatives say were put in place to guard against voter fraud? Joining me now, the Minister for Democratic Institutions, Marian Monsef. Nice to see you. It's good to be here. Okay, so you've, there's a lot of changes in this bill. Which is the one that you think will have the most impact on, on voter turnout or trying to encourage people to be part of the process? Well, today we propose seven reforms, all with the intent of removing unnecessary barriers to those who are often on the margins of our society. We're going to restore vouching, for example. We're going to bring back the voter identification card. We're going to restore the electoral officer's uh, mandate to be able to uh, educate Canadians yeah. about their democracy. We're going to start connecting with young people as, as early as 14 years old so that they can have an invitation to be part of the table. We're, we're uh, granting the voting rights to expats who've lived abroad for more than five years and we have some integrity measures in there and democracy is complicated and a lot takes place between you know the writ being dropped and people casting that ballot and so to get more people out mm -hmm. there participating, it's going to take a series of measures, and today we began that work. So you're, you're essentially undoing a lot of what the Conservatives put in place. Um, one of the things that, that they put in place was the voter it, the voter information card, or vouching and the, and the VIC card. They thought that those two elements contributed to fraud. Do you think that the, that, that uh, fraud is, is a concern if you put those two things back, those two measures back? So part of what today's legislation that we introduced aims to do is to deliver on a, on a promise that we made during the la last election that the Fair Elections Act mm -hmm. uh, needs to be repealed. The unfair and undemocratic aspects that actually had no basis mm. in evidence uh, like that one of allegations of fraud, there's no substantive evidence. There's never been any substantive evidence that that kind of fraud took place. And so instead of trying to strengthen our democratic institutions, taking away uh, those two pieces actually made it harder for good, honest, hardworking Canadians to be part of their democracy. What about the, the expat, the living abroad? So you're taking away that five-year limit. So now you can live outside the country forever and still have a right to vote in Canada? That's okay? So, as you know, this case is before the Supreme Court right yep. now, and what we're addressing is uh, based on the recognition that today the world is a little bit different. Uh, people are going abroad. People are taking their Canadian values and their talent abroad. Uh, we know that's certainly the case for many young people, and they don't always know when they're going to come back. Mm -hmm. But as, as uh, one participant who drove from Portland, Oregon, six hours to come to Vancouver when I was doing my electoral town hall there, he said, just remember that at the end of the day, we're Canadians. Mm -hmm. We may be away because we don't have a choice or because there is an opportunity here to share our talent, but that doesn't change the fact that we're Canadians. That doesn't change the fact that we care about our country. That doesn't change the fact that our families and our communities are here, and we want to yeah. be part of the election process as well. So, but people who say, well, you know, if you've lived outside of the country for 20 years, what could you possibly know about the direction the country is headed or, you know, what policies the country needs? Is that, is that a, a point that you consider that the, the, the people may not be, or maybe that there should be some sort of limit on how long you're allowed to be outside of the country? Look, a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. And we all know that there is a connection to home uh, that will never change and we want more people voting and if if this is an opportunity to open our democracy so mm -hmm. that people who have this charter protected right can participate then we will and I also explained in the House of Commons today uh, after introducing the bill yeah. in the House today that um, 
What we've presented, we believe, is a strong uh, series of reforms, but we know that it can be better. And so the discussion in the House of Commons, hopefully, yeah. will lead to strengthening this even further. Okay, well, one of the ways, it, it, you know, to encourage more people to vote, Marc Mehran put out, you know, a report that had mm -hmm. a lot of very practical things in it, um, it really and fairly easy things, too, it seemed to me. For instance, he wanted to move voting day to a weekend. He wanted to span it over more time. Are those things that you'll still look at? Are those things off the table, or you, might you still consider those? So I'm going to take a minute to uh, give a lot of appreciation and respect for all the contributions that our chief electoral officer has made to this country. I do believe that Canada is stronger because of his service, and we're going to miss him. Uh, and it's going to be really hard to fill his very big shoes once he leaves. But he did make some thoughtful recommendations. Mm -hmm. Those recommendations are before uh, a really hardworking group uh, of uh, parliamentarians yep. through the Procedure and House Affairs Committee. Uh, they will be studying it. And today was the beginning okay. of a series of reforms that we intend to introduce. So uh, we're just getting started. Okay, so you, you, the other big part of the mandate, and perhaps the more difficult one, is changing the electoral system entirely. Mm -hmm. Where are you at with that? Are we going to still see legislation that will get rid of first past the post before the next election? So where we are with that is we are, uh, we've wrapped up a tour that I've taken with our parliamentary secretary, Mark Holland, uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. We've gone to every province and territory. The committee who's uh, been studying this work uh, has also wrapped up its yep. tour and it's wrapping up its deliberations and uh, uh, we work finding other ways to reach out to as many Canadians as possible the committee is going to report back to us on December 1st mm -hmm. Their recommendations, we're going to take that into consideration, uh, and we hope to introduce legislation in the House this spring. So if the committee says we would like a referendum, where are you, where is your head with that now? Because what we saw just now, just recently in PEI, yep. and I talked to the Premier yesterday, was there was a plebiscite, the turnout was not great, even in PEI where they like to vote on things, and so now he wants a binding referendum on it because he didn't think that he got enough people, uh, enough of their buy-in. So has that... Has any of that or talking to people changed your opinion on a referendum or the idea of it? I still don't like a referendum. I still think it's mm. too costly. I still think that it's too divisive. I still think that based on previous uh, instances uh, in BC, let's look at BC, mm. let's look at Ontario, not enough people came out, but we are watching what's happening uh, in PI very closely. And even though I don't believe that a referendum is not the best <coughs> way to go about this conversation, I'm open to what the committee has to say. They're going to recommend an alternative to first past the post. Mm -hmm. They're going to let us know if online voting and mandatory voting should be part of the next federal election. And they're also going to come back to us and say, we think that uh, a way to gauge broad support on reforms is maybe it's through a referendum, yeah. maybe there's another way. And December 1st is the day that uh, uh, we receive that report. But we should believe still that the government is committed to changing the electoral system because there have been some signals that th that is not really a priority anymore. We have been committed to this since the day we started. We've been working on this since the day we started. That work continues. The committee is going to come back to us with recommendations. Uh, we'll be reaching out to Canadians with uh, a digital initiative. Uh, and all of that is uh, meant to make sure that we hear from as many Canadians as possible before we introduce legislation in the spring. Uh, I, I want to ask you about the issues around your citizenship, because we haven't talked since mm -hmm. all of that unfolded. Mm -hmm. Have you been able, at this stage, to sort out your own paperwork and sort of get you know your passport to say the things that it's supposed to say and okay. and show people what you know that yes I was born here or or, or is the do are the documents just too hard to find because of the way you had to flee um, well firstly yeah. I'm just as Canadian as you are uh, and uh, when uh, when I realized that some corrections need to be made, yeah. I went on the immigration website and they have a very helpful set of uh, frequently asked questions and I'm going through that process uh, just like any other Canadian would and uh, I'll be sure to keep you updated throughout that process. But has it been more difficult because you were a refugee and you know, so, and, you know if you didn't know where you were born, I don't know if the paperwork even exists, often that's the problem for, for refugees, right, when they're leaving a difficult situation. I realize that uh, people like me uh, haven't always been in the House of Commons, uh, but I can assure you that my story is not an uncommon one. Just outside here, uh, one of the people waiting out there shared 
his mother's story yeah, yeah. of uh, what happened uh, when when they had to flee. And so my story may be unique in Canadian politics, sure. and I hope that that won't be the case uh, once we're done with our mandate, that more people who have different experiences have an opportunity to be part of the political process. Uh, it may be new in Canadian politics to have somebody like me in, in this position, but my story is the story of millions of people around the world and uh, our immigration system, uh, the good folks who, who deliver this work, uh, I'm sure see this story again and again. Sure, but you are updating your papers to reflect the new reality. Just like any other Canadian would, I am, and uh, I'll be sure to keep you updated. Okay, we'll leave it there, Minister. Thank you, appreciate Thank your you. time. Thanks. The opposition continues to accuse Justin Trudeau of participating in so-called cash for access. And today, a prominent former...